We'll give it one more minute before we start. Well, um, I'm Suri Deitch and I'm Dean of the School of Professional Advancement. And I'm really excited to welcome you to this open house about um, graduate degrees and certificates at the Tulane School of Professional Advancement. And if you're able to turn your video on, it'd be great to see you, but we completely understand if you can't. Um, while we're getting going, we're always curious to know who's joining us. So if you wouldn't mind, um, put your name, where you're calling in from, and the program you're interested in into the chat box at the bottom of the screen. Um, it would be great to know who you are and where you're from and what you're interested in. If you don't mind going ahead and doing that. All right, well, we have um, slow typers, I think, but um, great. Thanks, Kevin. El Paso, Texas. Texas is always great. Um, New Orleans, hometown. All right. Thanks, Shannon, for pointing out that you're from California, even though you live in Acadia Parish. Um, Natchez, great. All right. Thanks so much for doing that. Um, just so you know, our graduate students are about evenly split between the Gulf South region, which I would say includes Corpus Christi, and um, the rest of the continental United States with a few people spread around the world. Um, so a lot of diversity, but like a good strong base in New Orleans and the Gulf South. So today is Tuesday, August 24th. It's actually the second day of fall 2021 classes. So a great time to be um, at Tulane, a great time to be thinking about continuing, continuing your education. Um, we're really excited because it's so nice to be meeting with new and returning students, both online and in person. And, um, you know, we, we feel great about where Tulane is at, how Tulane has come through the pandemic, even if the pandemic's not over in the way that we hoped it would be. Uh, but, you know, I would just say that um, Tulane has really flourished and um, I think handled the challenges of the pandemic in a really um, forward thinking way and has come out stronger. And so um, in my opinion, becoming a part of the Tulane community is even more meaningful than, um, than ever. So we're excited to get to spend a little bit of time with you this evening and to think about the incredible opportunities you have before you as you continue your educations. Um, so let me just try to sum up really quickly the Tulane SOPA community before we launch into um, our, our webinar slides and our presentation for you. Uh, so this is a community, an academic community that is focused on teaching and learning within Tulane University. It has a long history, um, as I'll talk about in a minute, and it is completely focused on students and keeping you on track toward your certificate or degree. Our faculty and staff are all about helping students to transform their lives for the better. And students in our community know why we all do this and are very much, um, it is a united community where people support one another and where people get to know one another regardless of where they're coming from geographically um, and in many other ways as well. It's an incredibly diverse community um, in every respect, race, gender, age, um, political orientations, 
um, backgrounds. We have a high proportion of um, veterans and active duty students, for example, um, socioeconomic background, all of that. And it makes for an amazing learning experience. So we're really excited to get to tell you more about it. Um, I'm with my colleague, Sheila Gold, who's our executive director of recruitment and admissions and our colleague, Ann Conlon, who's behind the scenes and is running the slides. And I'm going to talk first about um, SOPA overall. The webinar focuses on our graduate student experience and um, the structure of our programs and doesn't get into specific detail about the programs and the curriculum so much. Um, that's done in the um, individual program webinars, which I'm sure you're getting information about um, since you're hearing from us about these open houses. And hopefully you're also hearing about events like our Black Philanthropy Panel that's happening tomorrow night out of our um, program in public administration. And maybe you're even following us on social media and seeing um, other kinds of school activities and um, you know people getting to meet online and in person. So um, in the next slide, like I said, just a little bit of background about um, the School of Professional Advancement. Tulane is a really unusual elite private research university because um, teaching working adults and offering a curriculum that's relevant to fundamental to the school and goes all the way back to its founding as the Medical College of Louisiana in 1834. And our predecessor school um, actually started in the 1880s. So there's a long history, but we get to do it in a 21st century fashion, which means that um, we get to do it online, educate people online and um, with the best that the technology offers and the, um, the best ways of helping people to balance school and everything else in their lives. So it's a great legacy um, that we get to carry forward. In the next slide, um, we just give a little bit of a sort of, this is the structure of the webinar. So I'm gonna talk about online, which is most of where our graduate and post-baccalaureate instruction happens. Talk a little bit about our programs and our amazing faculty, student support, especially academic advisement, but also career advisement. And then um, we will talk about tuition and financial aid, important things like that. And um, all of it is backed up by the Tulane University name and reputation. And um, the fact that we're offering a Tulane quality education, um, but focused on people, again, who are typically balancing school and many other obligations. So first to talk about online, uh, all universities during the pandemic learned how to teach online um, or at least moved online, whether or not they learned how to do it well. We've been doing it for a long time and we have an approach to teaching online that we think works really well. So we have small classes, typically between um, 10 and 20 students, sometimes up to 25. We have a lot of interaction and different kinds of um, modalities for learning. And like I said, taking advantage of everything the technology has to offer. We have synchronous meetings, like the one that we're having right now. You might be doing a group project. You might have a guest speaker in your class. That's typically once a month. Um, sometimes it's more frequent. And then in every, every week of your class, you have some way of um, interacting with other students. It could be a discussion board. It could be um, a group project, like I said. It could be reviewing one another's work. Um, and even my, in my experience, um, students also find ways to get together outside of the structured class time and support one another, whether it's a Saturday afternoon study group or something like that. So we have a great model for online learning. And um, one of the ways that we talk about our expertise in this area is through our metrics. So um, numbers of students who've taken online classes, numbers of programs, 
numbers of faculty trained to teach well online, which is not the same as teaching in the classroom and um, award-winning programs. So we're, we're really proud of how we do this work. In the next slide, um, we have uh, just a sampling of our faculty. The faculty is a mix of full-time people who are um, on faculty teaching, supporting programs, doing academic advisement. Um, Tyra Mitchell and Ralph Russo on the right side of your screen are two examples of those people. Some of them have spent their entire careers in academia. Um, more typically, they've come from industry. That's actually the case for both Tyra and Ralph, um, who had long careers in Tyra's, um, in Tyra's case in the healthcare field and Ralph's case in um, cybersecurity, IT, and actually policing. And then they're supported by um, a couple hundred adjunct faculty who are still active in industry and who teach a class or two for us um, every semester because they love to share their knowledge. And they bring with them their educational credentials and backgrounds, but also their real world exposure and knowledge of what's going on in the field right now and their networks, which they actively use to help students uh, get internships and jobs and um, which they help you use to develop professional networks that you'll have for the rest of your careers. The next slide um, has just a list of all of our master's degree programs. Like I said, we're not gonna get into a lot of detail about them this evening, but um, it's a, a wide range of master's degrees in applied fields where you can take what you learn and directly into the into the field. Uh, we have one program that is an exception. That's our Master of Liberal Arts, which is a humanities and social science degree that is um, especially designed for working adults and is taught by some of the best humanities faculty at Tulane University who um, teach all different kinds of students, but especially love teaching um, adult students in the MLA program. On the next slide, we have a list of our graduate certificate programs. And these are all stackable, which means that if you decide you want to go for a certificate in um, economic development, for example, that's four courses, um, all of them except one or four courses, and you might do that. And the admission standards and process is the same as for the full degree. And if you get three courses in and you say, you know, I'm having a great experience and I'm learning a lot, but I actually wanna learn more, you can easily transition over to the Master of Public Administration as an example. Each of the certificate programs does that with one exception, which is the Cyber Technology Fund Fundamentals Program, which is 18 credits um, uh, or six courses and is geared toward people who wanna go into IT management or cybersecurity management and don't have technical backgrounds, um, whether from studying computer science or um, doing work in the IT field. So the certificate programs are stackable. On the next slide, our, um, our post-baccalaureate certificates. So these are uh, bodies of knowledge, again, in applied fields where um, you don't need the master's degree necessarily to, um, to be qualified to do work. And so these are actually um, groups of courses taken from undergraduate majors and um, brought together to give you an industry certification or qualifications to um, work in a field like graphic design, you must have a bachelor's degree to um, be in a post-baccalaureate certificate. That's why we say post-baccalaureate. So those are our programs. And again, you can get a lot more information in depth um, by coming to one of our webinars or by reaching out to us and we can connect you directly with faculty in those programs. One of the ways in which we are um, adult learner friendly or help people to maximize the value of prior experience 
is um, through what's called credit for prior learning. In some cases, we have partnerships with organizations like the National Guard, the Marine Corps College, or the National League of Cities, where um, you can get advanced standing for having gone through another organization's training or education program, and that's a formal agreement that we have with them. More typically, what students are doing is developing a portfolio that um, takes their experience and matches it up to the learning objectives and specific courses within our master's degrees. Our faculty will work with you to do that. Essentially, it means that um, if you already know about a subject like, I don't know, let's say um, physical protection of facilities or um, municipal budgeting, you don't have to take that course. You can document your knowledge, working with our faculty, create the portfolio, and then um, the faculty will actually evaluate it and give you a grade and you can get up to six credits, which is two courses toward the master's degree. We also um, talk a lot about the ways in which we support in. So I said at the very beginning that this is an academic community that is all about teaching and learning and all about helping students um, to stay on the path toward earning the certificate or the degree. And that is the primary focus of what we do. One of the ways we do that is through our um, academic advisors who work with you individually to figure out what courses to take when, um, to stay on track toward your degree. We, for example, strongly encourage students to take at least two courses a semester if they're taking a master's degree to stay on track and um, earn the degree within a manageable period of time. Sometimes people take more, once in a while someone has to take less. Your academic advisor can work with you to figure out the best path for you. And if a challenge comes up um, while you're in the middle of the semester, which it does sometimes, especially these days, your advisor and your faculty will work with you to figure out how to um, navigate it and stay in the program. We are tremendously flexible in supporting students. We don't compromise on the quality of the curriculum or on our um, expectations for performance, but we will be flexible on everything else. And again, it's all about your success um, in the program and, and afterward. We also have a career advisor for the school who does things like offer workshops and employer panels on, but can also work with you on uh, tightening up your resume or your LinkedIn profile and um, works, it specializes in working with people who have a lot of experience and are um, thinking about how to translate that experience into their next steps professionally. I already said something about the faculty and the ways in which faculty bring their own professional networks to bear and to, to support students. Uh, you also have access to um, certain services and support as a Tulane alumnus. And that's something that you have for the rest of your life. And that is often a career boost as well. And with that, I'll hand things over to my colleague, Sheila Gold. And again, you know, please feel free to um, put questions or comments in the chat box at the bottom of the screen. Thanks, Suri. Um, welcome again, everyone. We always um, appreciate when prospective students come and spend time with us. Um, we're always excited to talk about our programs, but we also know that you're taking some of your time at the end of what I'm assuming was a busy day. So um, thank you again. Um, I am really excited to talk about the application process um, with you all, but I also like to let students know if you have any questions after this webinar or if during the webinar you want to drop them in the chat, please reach out. Um, we feel philosophically believe that um, the application process is the beginning of our relationship building with our students. So we encourage as many questions as possible because that's how we get to know you and you get to know us. So um, please feel free at any time. Um, one of the differentiators of the School of Professional Advancement from other schools um, at Tulane University is our affordability. So our tuition price point is intentionally lower than other schools at the university because we know that our students are 
are um, adult learners that are juggling not only school, but other responsibilities, many of which are financial. Um, so for our graduate courses um, starting this semester, fall 2021, our tuition rate is $1,119 per credit hour. Our classes are three credit hours, and most of our students take between one and two courses a semester. Um, I also like to let students know that we have very nominal fees on top of our tuition rate. So it's not like this is our tuition rate and it, we will have be piling fees and fees um, on top of it. We really don't. We're very intentional about keeping our fees very low. Um, even with um, our intention to, to make um, our tuition accessible, the majority of our, do, of our students do apply for financial aid. Um, we encourage students to start the financial aid application process the minute that they start applying um, to it be admitted to the school. We do require the FAFSA form to be filled out. That form requires multiple different pieces of information to be supplied to the school and can take several weeks to go through the process. So please don't wait um, sort of towards the end of the application process. Um, our, our pro tip is to get started as soon as possible. Um, the types of aid that we offer are federal grants and loans. Um, we are also very proudly a yellow ribbon school. So for those of you um, who are active duty military and veterans, we also offer, offer a 20% discount. Uh, we also offer a 20% discount for active and retired safety personnel, as well as a 20% discount for students who received their bachelor's degree um, from a minority serving institution, such as an HBCU or um, a Hispanic serving institution. Um, Suri also mentioned two slides before for this one, our credit for prior learning process. That is also another way that you can save um, tuition. You can receive up to six credits or two classes um, for prior learning, and that will save you over $6,000 in tuition. So definitely take advantage of that. That's also um, a savings of time. Those are two classes um, that you won't need to take, and that could be a, a semester um, of savings in time. A little bit um, about our application process. We try to be as straightforward with our application as possible. It's not meant to be um, a tricky process. We're not trying to um, test you through the process, but there are questions that pop up along the way. And so we're always available to address those. Um, our application is an electronic application. It lives on our website. Um, the site address is at the bottom of this slide, sopa.tulane.edu. If you go to our website, you will see a very big button at the top that says apply. Click that and it will open you up into our application portal. Um, we do require a $50 application fee. However, as a thank you to students for attending our webinars, we automatically waive that fee. Uh, we've captured your attendance this evening. So when you apply, it will automatically be waived. For those of you who have already applied and have paid that fee, please send me an email. I'm happy to refund that fee. It's a very quick process, so don't be shy about asking for that. We also require an image of a current government ID. For most folks, that's a picture of their driver's license. You could just take it with your phone and upload it to the application. We will need transcripts from any institution from which you've received college credit, undergraduate, and if you've received some graduate credit, we will need those as well. We do not require the GRE for our graduate program. So oftentimes that is good news for students to hear. We don't feel like um, the GRE is an accurate indicator of success in graduate schools. So if you have um, stress about taking tests, do not worry about that for Tulane SOPA. And then many of our programs will also require other materials like your resume or possibly a written statement. So that's different um, for different programs. We also do not require letters of recommendation. So um, those are some things that we do require and we don't require. 
A little bit about our application deadlines. So we have two types of deadlines. We have an application deadline, which is the date by which your application needs to be submitted to us. And then we have early enrollment deadlines. We just started our um, fall semester. So this fall deadline that um, I will discuss will be for a year from now. Our next enrollment term is in January. We have starts um, in January. In, in in spring, summer, and fall. Um, spring is our next entry term. January 1 is the application deadline. However, that application is open now. We do review applications on a rolling basis, which means if you complete your application, we will read it, get you an admissions decision. Um, and so I encourage students to apply as early as possible. Um, also, if you apply early, if you are admitted and register for classes by December 1 for the spring term, you will receive a $500 scholarship. That is a $500 um, scholarship towards your first semester of tuition. And that's our way of encouraging you to apply and enroll early, but also to take a little bit of the financial burden off your first semester of college. The same is true for our other two semesters. If you're interested in starting in the summer term, May 1 is our application deadline, but that application once again is open. If you apply and register for classes by April 25th, you will receive the um, $500 scholarship. And then if you're interested in a year from now, if you apply and register for classes by June 1, you'll get the scholarship, but the um, application is not due until August 1. Although once again, we encourage you to um, apply and enroll early so that you can receive the scholarship. If you have any questions about those, these dates do live on our website. Um, and I'm also happy to send those to you in an email if you ask. So um, my contact information is on the screen. Um, we are always happy to answer your questions. Um, this information also lives on our website, um, but we do have some time right now for any questions that you all may have if you wanna go ahead and drop those in the chat. So Susan, we see your um, question about the blockchain course. This is actually a special partnership of our IT program. And it is, um, it is actually with Coursera. And um, if we can, we'll follow up with you directly about it. It's a great opportunity to um, gain some really useful skills. Um, but the partnership with um, Coursera is valuable for us because it's also an opportunity to get to know about our program. So, so we're glad you're interested in it. And let's see, any other questions? So um, question from Shannon about the length of the semester. Um, it's so the summer session is is 12 weeks the fall and spring such ses um, sessions are actually 14 um, so a little more breathing room in the fall and the spring we follow the traditional semester schedule um, like sheila said we um we have three starts a year and we if students can manage it we actually really strongly improve. Um, it, it, we strongly encourage people to um, go year round and keep making progress. Um, I see actually a question um, from Melissa directly to me about what it's like to go to school online and um, is there a diploma, is there graduation? And the answer is um, yes. So you, if you're an online student, you're part of the Tulane community, there are several hundred um, students in graduate programs across Tulane at several schools, at SOPA, at the law school, at the School of Social Work, at the School of Public Health. Um, soon there'll be students from other schools as well. And you have, you have access to university resources. You use our libraries um, in the same way that most students do. Actually, students less and less frequently 
go to the library in person, the, um, the resources of the library, for example, are largely through online databases and, um, and access to scholarly articles. Um, you, are, you are invited to come to graduation in person, although we stream it as well because um, not everyone can. It's an incredible experience to go through a Tulane University commencement. Um, there is a unified commencement where every single student graduating across the university um, gets together in the Superdome in New Orleans. And then there are individual school um, diploma ceremonies where you get to um, walk across the stage and have your name called. And if you can't come in person, we um, we call your name and um, and acknowledge you individually. Um, but hopefully, you'd be able to come to um, come to New Orleans. The diploma is the same diploma, re regardless of whether or not you take an online program or an on ground program. And it is a Tulane University diploma. It has your school and your program on it. Um, the MPA residency is, is a mandatory part of the program. It is um, three days in, held in June. You have flexibility about which year you do it when you're in the program. And um, we haven't actually had one yet because we canceled the one this year. Well, I'm hoping the students who just graduated are gonna come back for 2022. Um, but it's going to be an incredible experience with faculty and members of our industry advisory boards and guest speakers all gathered together and an opportunity to learn together and also um, enjoy New Orleans. So we're actually really excited about that. Um, let's see. I see a question from Sean about um, going full time. So. At the graduate level, full-time is three courses um, at a time. That's what constitutes full-time. We do have students who work and take three classes at a time. It's really hard to do. The classes are demanding. Um, taking two classes is more typical. We, um, If you're gonna be full-time, um, which means either taking three classes or sometimes students take four classes at a time so they can finish the master's degree in one year. Um, we'll work with you to do that. We strongly recommend that you not have a job um, and you um, have really limited personal obligations otherwise because it is a tremendous amount of work, um, but it's also a great way to get your degree done. And um, for students who have access to resources for a short amount of time, for example, it can be a great um, a great decision to go into the program full time and not work. And the courses are available, so um, you you can take three or four courses at one time and get the courses that you need to make progress in the master's degree and earn it in um, in one year. Um, typically, like we've said, what people do is with a master's degree is they'll spread it out over two years and take two classes um, at, a, at a time. Any other questions that people have? Well, um, we're really excited. We're really excited from your questions to, um, to see your interest in different um, aspects of the programs. We're excited, like Sheila said, to, um, to get to know you as part of this admissions process. Um, if you haven't already gotten the sense from this webinar that we are a small, interactive, hands-on kind of school, um, then I'll just say it um, out loud again. And um, like we've already said, thank you for the time you've spent with us this evening. And um, we look forward to following up with you. So um, have a great evening, everyone. And thanks for joining Tulane SOPA for this um, period of time this evening. Thanks so much.